Mike check, Mike check, can you hear me? I can hear you, loud and clear. Awesome, man. So guys, today I have Sterling Chambles. He is the owner and CEO of our amazing brokerage, Certified Home Loans. He's based out of South Carolina. So welcome, welcome Sterling. Thank you for spending some time out here with us. Um, man, the question that we keep getting asked, you know, is, is how the market is reacting, where we see the real estate market and mortgage market going forward. So I think it'd be interesting to, to get an understanding about how your market, your local market is reacting in um, South Carolina. And then we can kind of compare to uh, how our market is reacting down here. So how's it looking over there? Yeah, so um, I think it's pretty similar, um, you know, probably throughout the United States. I think that, um, you know, I live in Charleston specifically and um, very similar to South Florida and that you have limited um, land mass. Um, so in Charleston, you're, you got the coast, you know, we're on the beach here and, you know, you got people that want to be towards the beach, right? So I think that, um, you know, whenever you have a situation that, you have a desirable area to live in. Does this kind of stuff impact the market? Absolutely, right? It's 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 making people pause a little bit. Um, but I'll tell you that you know our company, we're doing purchases like nobody's business right now. Um, people are still buying homes, um, so I think that you know in general there there's um, some concern and some unrest. But at the end of the day, things are still moving forward. Um, you know, probably pretty similar to like y'all are doing down there. Um, and, and so it, it's, it's, a, it's touch and go, but, um, you know, right now things are still moving forward. Yeah. Down here, man, it's the same thing, right? People are still, we're still buying homes. Uh, you know, everyone's tired of renting, especially at a time like this, that you really don't know what your landlord is going to do. Right. So you have that, that uncertainty kind of hanging over you as a, like a cloud. Right. So, uh, people are still buying their homes. The interest rates are still low. So yeah. yeah, we're we're still seeing movement down here. We the only thing that I can say that it has slowed down a bit are the refinances. But you know what we keep telling our clients is, and, and you know you and I talked about this before is get your applications in and be ready so that you know two or three weeks from now when the rates come back down we can you know we're ready to close you out and get you a low interest rate. Yeah. So you have um, to speak to that a little bit. You have. Um, all the market data is telling us rates should be really low, right? Um, the one factor, and, and by market data, I mean the MBA, you know, your mortgage-backed securities, your, uh, your, your market general financial markets, um, the one factor that, that's causing them not to be low or not as low as everyone thought is risk. Um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, not in our industry, and, and so you know, people are um, you know, being a little cautious with that. But I think that once we get through this little push here, once we, you know, the, the world settles down a little bit, I think that you're going to see a really nice opportunity um, to get that refinance in. And so, yeah, operate just like you're telling your clients, hey, let's go through the process. Let's get everything in. There's no cost to you, right? Um, and there's actually right now, Katie May and Freddie Mac have kind of um, uh, limited or uh, expanded their scope on appraisal waivers. So sometimes right now you're actually not needing an appraisal for a refinance. Um, or for a purchase, even that. Um, but then, yeah, get everything ready. Get the underwriter looking at it, and then when that moment's there, the rates come down. You all get to just press lock, and then, you know you're you're finishing up to the finish. Yeah, line and, and just to um, touch on that real quick, it's uh, I was reading an article. It's the first time in history actually that the mortgage, the fixed mortgage rates, don't follow the ten-year bond, right? So the ten-year bonds has actually been going going down, but the mortgage rates have not. So um, once this once this virus gets under under control, I think the mortgage rates will react as as they have throughout history, which is they follow the ten year bond. The ten year yeah, bond. And, and the outlier, of course, right now is a, a pandemic that you know yeah. we've never seen, and so um, you know the potential risk for a lender and why the rates aren't there is you know that they're they're kind of you know building in a little bit for potential job loss, potential defaults, and other market factors. Um, and so once that calms down, you know your ten year is super low. And so at that point, then, then the rates should follow. Um, and so I think that going into the summer months, we're gonna have a really nice opportunity to refinance a lot of clients. Um, and that may provide a lot of relief too for some clients that went through some financial hardships. Um, so all in all, it should you know work out well if we can just make it through this month or two, hopefully. Yeah, completely agree, man. And um, it, you know, it, you brought up, or, or it reminds me of a good point that I wanted to bring up here is, uh, you know, the whole deferment of the mortgages, right? So we're getting a lot of 
getting a lot of questions about whether it, it'd be, be a good idea to defer a client's mortgage or a, a car payment or a credit card or something like that. Um, give us, give us your thoughts, your insight on what you think or, uh, the details that you have about those deferments. Yeah. So the first thing you got to make sure is that clients are aware what that really means, right? Deferment is essentially, um, you're saying that you can't make your payment. Um, it's not just a free pass. Okay. We have a pandemic going on. Um, we also had the same thing in South Florida when hurricanes come through, sometimes your servicer or the, the company you're making payments to will offer deferments. Um, but it's very critical that you understand what it is. And so what it means is, yes, you can, you know, skip whatever amount of payments, you know, usually it's about three is, is kind of sometimes they may allow for more at this point. Um, but make sure that you're aware that, okay, after, if let's say you're skipping three payments, right? And your payment's $1,000 a month. Well, on the fourth payment, it's not just $1,000 and you continue on, you know, at that point, all three of the past payments plus the new payment are due. And so, you know, it's really just a, a relief effort um, for consumers, but be aware that it's not, you know, it's, it's not just, hey, you get a pass this month. Um, it, it's a way for you guys, for consumers to recover and then potentially make their payments in the future. And so where a lot of pitfalls happen is they don't, under, you know, it's not understood correctly. And, and um, some of the servicers are, don't do a great job of explaining it. And so then at the, when the fourth month or whatever month comes along and, and that surprise happens, um, then you're looking at other options that potentially could impact your, your credit profile, um, which is, you know, you'll ask, be asked to go to a loan modification or a payment plan or and that has potential impacts on your credit. And so we're talking about, you know, the refinance option probably being very strong in the summer months, right? Um, and, and potential relief coming there and clients being able to take advantage of that. Well, if they've done this deferment option, if they don't, if they haven't gotten caught up at that moment, um, then they're potentially, you know, they wouldn't be eligible at that time. Uh, you can actually make yourself ineligible for about 12 months after, after that actual, um, you know, uh, modification. Yeah, so, so guys, um, in other words, right, it's it's not a, the banks are not going to forgive your mortgage payments, right? They're going to defer right. them. And what they're doing now is they're moving them to the next month that's due. So in other words, if they forgive or defer three months, on that fourth month that everything comes back to, I guess, normal, if you want to say, all four months are due at once, right? So instead of instead of having paid your mortgage every month, you now have to pay four mortgage payments at once. Right. right. So not only does the, will it have a, a financial, put a financial burden on you, it, it will also or may also uh, damage your credit to the point where now you can't take advantage of the good interest rates because you're in deferment status, right? You're not cut up. And, you know, if, if it's a mortgage of a couple of thousand bucks, you're looking at, you know, six, seven, eight thousand dollars all at once that it, it's, it may it may be undoable for some people, especially people that you know lost their job or may have been laid off temporarily. So, uh, and in, in you know, in my case, what what I'm telling my clients is, if if you can make your payments, make them. Yeah, and that that's the simplicity of it. if you can make your payments, make them. Um, if you can't make your payments, hey, take advantage and, and do whatever you got to do to make sure that you know you're staying safe, keeping the family in, in good standing, and. Um, but just understand that that may have a potential credit impact um, if you're unable to make the lump sum payment when that time comes. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, and if you can make your payments, the, the best the best method is just keep making the payments on time and, and, and be able to take advantage of potentially a lower rate in the future. Exactly. And, and deferment is a much better option than missing a payment, right? So if, right. if you're thinking or you think you may not be able to make a payment, I mean, 100%, you have to defer. Right. It's a much better option at that point than to miss a mortgage payment. Right? So uh, missing the mortgage payment will essentially put you out of the refinance or, or a mortgage loan for at least 12 months. Right. right. So uh, what about a, any deferments on car loans or credit cards and things like that? Uh, same effect? Uh, I think that, uh, so, so, you know, that's going to depend on your servicer um, with those particular options. Um, I would, I would kind of operate in the same manner. Um, you do have, you know, car loans can, they can kind of make up their own rules. They, um, it's basically, it's a different type of product, right? Banks can lend. Um, it's not securitized in the secondary market. So banks can make decisions, um, you know, and, and so consult your bank and so, you know, just know your, really look into it before you decide to sign that paperwork. 
um, understand what's going on and, and what the result could potentially be. Um, but you know, car, it's not necessarily the same as a mortgage, um, but it can have the same impact. At the end of the day. Yeah, completely agree. And, and, and again, it goes back to the same, essentially the same advice, right? On, on the mortgage, if you can make your payment, make them. If, um, if you think you're going to miss a payment on a car or a credit card, uh, then at that point you'd have to, you know, by all means take, take advantage of the, uh, the deferment, um, uh, benefit. So, yeah. And, um, and one tip that I've been giving my clients also Sterling is that, you know, take advantage of those, those 0% transfer offers on credit yeah. cards. Right. So if, if you, if you're out there with, you know, four or five credit cards, a couple of thousand bucks on each one, you may, you may have a, uh, have received some type of transfer or, or zero balance, I'm sorry, zero interest rate balance transfer offers. So take advantage of it, right? Consolidate all of your credit cards, put them into a, a 0% interest. Uh, yeah, credit card right now, now you're... With, with the um, the Fed rate was cut and everyone thought initially that was the mortgage rate, but in reality it's called, it's tied to small balance uh, loans and, and credit cards. So, you know, there's probably a lot of great credit card offerings right now if you need to make some transfers and, and, and buy yourself some time. Uh, make sure to, to, to approach those avenues. And I just want to clarify, if you do take advantage of the deferment, right, and then you're, you are able to make that lump sum payment when the time comes, there's no impact on your credit. That You're in good standing. Right, right. Um, but just know that that's, that's going to happen. They're going to ask, you know, um, if, however many months you decided to take, it'll become due all at once, or, or, or you're going to, at that point, be impacted by your credit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So where do, you see, um, where do you see the interest rates go from here? <laughs> like uh, if we had a if we had a magic <laughs> magic ball where we can say all right listen, rates I, are coming I, down here i think that number one we're already at crazy historically low rates right we're we're history this is one of the best moments in you know to buy or to refinance um even with what's going on in the market um i think that all the data and, and when i say data you're talking about mortgage what mortgage-backed securities are trading at um, and then you're talking about the the 10 year, um, you know, it, it tells us that once once things stabilize, that rates should go lower. Um, and so nobody can, you know, project the future. Um, but that's I think that um, if I was a consumer, I would be ready for the potential of, of things to go lower. Um, and so that that's kind of where I see things headed. Yeah, and and right now, what's what's driving these rates up again is is the market volatility, right? And, secondary market you have you have the bonds the 10-year bond for example that's behaving so volatile right it's changes throughout the day you know it takes it takes a couple of swings up and down throughout the day and it, it becomes it essentially becomes almost uh, too risky for these banks to uh, to follow suit right so when it, historically when the 10-year mortgage 10-year uh, bond drops the mortgage rates follow and again i, I I don't see this this market slowdown or this economic economy slowing down due to any market crash or real estate market crash, uh, which tells me that once we once we open our doors again as a as a whole, right, business opens their doors again. I think that mortgage rates will begin to to trickle back down to to where they were before this this virus hits. Right? Hey, look, at the end of the day, if you get stuck right now, you get stuck with a three point six three point seven rate. Yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good problem. We're talking, to about, have, we're right? talking about three percent rates, like you know, like like the thing in the past. But you know, that's a great interest rate at the end of the day. You know, that's that's very cheap money. Um, and, and you know, if you if you don't know that, just ask your parents or your grandparents that were paying, you know, ten, twelve percent, and we're, yeah. we're thrilled about it. You know, so. So when when I started when I started in my real estate mortgage career two thousand and six, a good rate was like seven and a half eight percent. Yeah, I remember that, you know, it's like, um, I, re I remember writing my first mortgage and I think we got the person like a 7.75 or something like 7.5. And it was like the lowest in the market at that time, you know, and so that, you, and that was 20% down too. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, and, and then obviously the market, you know, the market crashed for, uh, as we all know, but I don't see that happening here. First of all, right. I, I don't see a market crash of that magnitude. I, I think it's more of a, an external. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 you know, you know, I've gotten a question, Hey, what do you think the real, you know, and you asked me it earlier and, um, you know, do you think this market's going to crash? Right. Um, absolutely. The housing market specifically, I, 
it's it's built on a solid foundation, right? So the financial crisis back in 2007, 2008 was specifically from um, the housing price, the housing market and loans that were written to consumers that didn't qualify or didn't understand the products they were being placed into. And if anybody in your, you know, is seeing this and they've gotten a loan since 2010, they understand that the process is no longer like that, right? It, it's, it's, you have to provide your entire life and your report card and everything else that goes into <laughs> your blood type. And, and yeah. Your, and, and we make it, easy to get, but, but it, it's every client that's bought a house in the last, you know, call it 10 years or 11 years has, you know, fully qualified. Um, and that doesn't mean that, um, you know, things can't be shaken up because obviously we're experiencing job loss right now. Um, but in general, it's a very solid foundation. And so I think you'll see, um, you know, a, a, maybe a little bit of a lull. Um, and, and that might not be the worst thing for certain markets like South Florida and, and, and Charleston where, you know, prices were going up, up, up. You know, it might be time to stabilize a little bit. It might actually be a good thing for us. Um, yeah. But, but you know, people that are concerned about the market crashing, like, listen, South Florida, you have a beach and you have an Everglades and everyone wants to live there. And so, you know, every day you have more and more people coming there and you only have so much, you know, land mass. So you can't just build next door. So, you know, that's going to keep value strong. It's always going to keep value strong. Um, you know, and, and, and the fact that this market is built on solid foundation loans, you know, you're, ne you're not going to see what happened, you know, 10 years prior. Yeah. And, and when you're buying South Florida, you're buying a, you know, it, it's a market that uh, has access to all of Central and South America, right? It's a, it's a big retirement destination. So uh, again, it's a, even if there is a market slowdown down here in South Florida, the, it won't be as, as extreme or, or as big as in other parts of the country, right? So right. Uh, hopefully the, uh, the pandemic doesn't, doesn't uh, you know, become out of control or anything like that to the point where, well, at that point, it wouldn't be a market. Our last, our last concern would be the real estate market at that point. Right. But yeah. uh, you know, even to your point, even if there is a market slowdown, uh, it may be a good thing for South buying uh, buying in South Florida. So uh, again, it's, it, it's a good thing, right? It's, um, it's not necessarily bad when you have a, a stabilizing real estate uh, market combined with historically low rates, right? So right. What, I'm, what, what we're focusing on telling our, telling our clients now is that, uh, you know, and we have, we have uh, plenty of active the approvals out there that are looking for application is that if, if you think your, your job is, is going to lay you off, then, you know, let's, let's put the home search on pause, right? Yep. Let's wait for everything to come back. Let's make sure you have some job security and then we can go out and, you know, do the loan and, and purchase your home. The, the homes aren't going to go anywhere there, right? There's, there's plenty of homes to choose from. Correct. Yeah, man. So it, it's, um, you know, this, if the market goes down a bit more uh, from where we are now, that will create some good opportunities for investors as well. Right. So if you've been saving, if you've been saving some cash and, you know, kind of, kind of been on the, um, the sidelines waiting for something to happen, this may be it. Yeah, it may be it. Um, you know, I think that again, people that are that are on the sidelines in South Florida, are, they're always going to be on the sidelines because at the end of the day, properties are always moving. You know, I think that you're going to see a little bit of a stabilization, but um, I don't, I don't think you're going to see anything that that creates some great deal all of a sudden. You know, some market collapse that you know. I, I think that everyone, whether you're a buyer or seller, you know, I think you can understand and take you know some some. Um, you know, solitude and the fact that you're in a market that's it's very stable in general. So um, will there be pockets of great deals? Sure. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, people are always buying, people are always selling houses in South Florida. Rates are really low. So you're able to, you know, when you start comparing it to your rent factors in South Florida, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to, you know, with rates are work right now to, to buy that house instead of, you know, going into another rental. Um, and, and, but yeah, I, I have a positive outlook in general in, in, in the market. Yeah. And, and, and when you, when you look at, you know, renting versus buying, right? Is it a good time to buy versus is it a good time to rent? I think the, uh, I, I think you have to look at it in terms of what you can recuperate, right? From, from your rental payments as compared to your mortgage payment, right? And when you own your home, you can at least recuperate some of the equity when you sell off, right? So if at the end of the day, if the market doesn't appreciate and in, you know, 10, 15 years from now, you sell the home for the same amount that you bought it for, Hey, you recuperate a lot of that money that you put in as opposed to renting 
you don't get any of it back. Oh, right? yeah, so, you're, you're and you could never pay, <laughs> you could never pay up your rent, right? Yeah. So, you know, as, as you get closer to retirement age, you, you definitely want to have a, a property, own a property that you can, you know, essentially pay off and not have a mortgage payment, right? Reduce your debts a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so when it comes to, you know, whether it's a good time to buy or not, uh, again, it's, it, it is, right? It, it also depends on you, what you're in the market for. Obviously, if you're looking to flip or something like that, you may, the margins may be a little bit slower, but if you're looking for your primary residence or if you're looking for something to you know, buy and hold, I think it's, it's a really good time. Rates are still low and there's some opportunities out there. Correct. The rate right now and then the rates to the future will be, I mean, the opportunities there. So I always think it's a good time to buy, um, especially where, where, the, you know, where everything is right this second. So. Yeah. So do you see... Um, a, some of the uh, banks, some of the lenders have tightened up their their uh, their guidelines for lending and so forth. And obviously, it's a it's it's a risk uh, measure, right? They're 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 making sure that they're not lending out too much money uh, in this environment and so forth. And so there are some other factors involved as well. But how long do you how long till you see some kind of um, back to or I guess a a return to what the, uh, the guidelines were before? Yeah, so to your point, some of the guidelines have been more restricted um, here in the last month, and, and that has to do with risk, and, and most of it has to do with job loss. Um, you know, we, we have um, different industries that are being impacted harder than others, so um, you're seeing a little bit more of a restrictive um, guideline profile in general, and I think it's, you know, in order for it to come back, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, I, I think that obviously the president said, hey, we're, you know, until April, end of April now for, um, you know, kind of status quo. And I think even after that, it's going to take, you know, <clears throat> a couple, three months for you know people to get back to work and um, start feeling comfortable again. And, and, and so, you know, the risk, and, and I think you're going to see the guidelines probably, we're looking at a quarter worth of, of more restrictive guidelines. And so, um, you know, the co consumers that are getting impacted by that are, are your more risky profiles, um, which are your lower credit score clients and um, higher, uh, what's called your debt to income clients. So, you know, this isn't impacting, um, you know, your clients that are putting down, you know, you know, they have good credit profiles. And so, you know, if, if it is impacting those clients, what you need to be doing and what your, your um, you know, your partners need to be doing is educating them. Hey, take this time to fix these things, right? Take the time to get your credit score from the 620 to the 660, where the guidelines are basically the same as they were. And, um, you know, and, and the result of that is, hey, it might take you a little bit longer to buy the house, but when you do buy that house, your rate's going to be better. Um, and, and, you know, your overall credit profile might be a little bit stronger going forward, which, which you know, it's not just mortgage payments. It's, you know, that saves you money in life, you know, in auto payments and insurance requirements and a bunch of other things. Um, so, you know, it, it's a, taking its time. It, it just takes a little more education now, I think. And, and we can get to the same place. It's just, you know, might take a little bit longer. So I think if, you know, guidelines, I see them 90 days is what I kind of expect, you know, them to be a little bit more restrictive. And then, and then after that, I think we're going to be back to normal. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of the clients that, you know, at, at our initial, initial meeting is we have that, uh, you know, we have that conversation about credit, right? So we pull the credit and, and I always, if I find that there's room for improvement, I always give them kind of like a roadmap, right? Or a checklist to follow. Uh, so that by the time they do find a home, their credit is, you know, 30, 40, 50 points higher, and we can get them a much lower rate than they would have expected anyway. So, yeah, we're, we're doing that now, too, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, clients that have, you know, in the low 600 to maybe mid 600s, we can, there's, there may be opportunity there. We have some, uh, we have some experience, right, in, in fixing credit. So, yeah. Uh, we'll give them a, a checklist and, and a roadmap to follow. And more often than not, than not, you know, we, we get really good results. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, we get them a much better, much better rate, much better deal than they anticipated. So it's a win-win. Correct. So people like you, people like me that are experienced in that and, and know the ins and the outs of how to, you know, how to get that roadmap going, <clears throat> you know, we're going to be more successful right now. Um, and, and your clients are going to appreciate you more. Um, you already have that knowledge and so in this time and where restrictions are coming you need to work with somebody like you that it's you know has that knowledge base so that you can say okay we can't do this but here's how we get there and and then you know within you know whatever that timeline looks like at least you got a buyer you know or at least you got some yeah you know, yeah man 
Um, absolutely. Sterling, thank you, man. We've been on here for about 30, 35 minutes, so I appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, I know we have a call coming up now, so I'm looking forward to that. And guys, you know, if you guys have any credit questions, any scenarios that you guys want to run through us, by all means, we're, we're here to help. Uh, now is the time. And, um, you know, thank you. Thank you, Sterling, for, for uh, spending some time out here with us. Appreciate it. All right, man. Appreciate it. Take care. All right. Bye, guys.